You are not ready for how awesome this is. Hello, my fellow Baldarians, and welcome to my first proper full-on build guide for Baldur's Gate 3. And honestly, this is essentially a cheat code. Now, before I explain what we're kind of doing here and why it works and why it's good, I want to stress that you should pay attention to the example fight in the background showing off the setup. I am alone, no party members. I am on tactician. I am at level 9 against level 8 and 9 and 10 enemies, and it is a 4v1 situation. It's just some random guards in a random corner. I've tried to keep it somewhere that's, you know, not very spoiler or anything. It's just a, a place and some dudes, nothing crazy going on. But well, that's a lie. What's crazy that's going on is how effortlessly I am not only surviving, but dominating the fight by simply existing near the enemies. See, what this does is make one of two things happen every time you get attacked. The first is you just don't take damage because they miss because your defensives, your AC, are through the roof. The second option is they do get through, but they still don't do any damage because your damage reduction is through the roof, but in return for them having the audacity to hit you, they explode for 30 to 40 damage. And repeat ad infinitum, and you will find rooms of enemies, despite you being alone, just kill themselves quickly trying to kill you. And it is the most satisfying thing in the world. You have an arsenal of fantastically fun spells. You have all the counters in the world, literally counter spell, but also uh, reactions to those around you in melee. You uh, have the ability to attack multiple times. You can wear heavy armor, use a variety of weaponry, and still have decent melee damage. And generally, there's kind of nothing this can't do. It is the ultimate, immortal, unkillable, unstoppable tank of a battle mage that wins fights by simply being in them. So if you too want to know how to feel like a god in Baldur's Gate 3, this is the one for you. Let's firstly go through the level ups all the way to my current level of 9, but I'll of course tell you what the final three levels will be doing for you, and then we'll actually go over the key abilities and how to play it and the equipment and basically everything you need to know. So here we are at our main man with us for the respec. Now you may have noticed that this is not a double multi-class build, this is a triple multi-class build. So at level 1, we need to essentially choose a class that has heavy armor proficiency, as we want, you know, the most AC possible and the most damage reduction possible, and that generally comes from your heavy armor. Now, initially, I was messing around with this on Fighter, but we actually get a lot more out of going Cleric, and specifically War Domain Cleric. The reason being is that Shield of Faith is a abjuration spell, which is very important, as the main uh, engine here will be Abjuration Wizards, so we need them to fuel the whole kind of thing that it does that we'll get to, and we just get a little bit more utility because this is what lets us attack multiple times in a turn despite only having one level in it, and it gives us a bit of a more diverse pool of spells. Deity, obviously, whatever you want, but given that I'm going Wizard, Mistra seems only appropriate, and then cantrips wise, this is pretty much just choose what you want. Blade War is very nice early on if you are going to start making this from level 1, but ultimately just choose what you feel like here. And then when it comes to stats, this is what I would suggest. The main important ones are having 16 in intelligence, as it is our spellcasting stat, and then the constitution, just so we're a bit healthier, although obviously this whole thing is being ridiculously hard to kill, so it's not super necessary. You could make the other 16 the strength, and then the 
constitution, the 14, but these are the kind of the three main ones. The strength, a bit of extra melee damage. We don't care about dex because of the whole armor situation, and I do at least like having 10 instead of 8 charisma for just, you know, conversation options and generally playing the game. In any case, on we go. On your first level up then, this whole tri-class setup does actually come online fairly early. We need to get Armor of Agathes, and we can do that via two methods. We can either go Warlock to grab it here, but that's not quite as effective as going Sorcerer. The reason we go Sorcerer is Draconic Bloodline, as the Ancestor here, the uh, White, gives us Armor of Agathes, and then we can upcast it to our highest spell slot, which is what we will be wanting to do as one of the core components of our whole setup here. So this is the way to go, and is a required extra level, and what makes it a tri-class setup. For your actual spells you get from this then, take magic missiles for the guaranteed damage if we ever need it, and then shield. It is an abjuration spell, you can use it as your reaction, and it will play in to your arcane ward once we get into that side of things, and just make you so much harder to get a hit on. So now that we've got everything set up in our first two levels, the heavy armor, a few spells, multi-attacks from cleric, and and then Armor of Agathe from Sorcerer, we can now go into Wizard, and literally all of the rest of our levels will be Wizard levels. So it's a 10-1-1 split. This is for a number of reasons, but our main passive that we will be taking once we get our second Wizard level scales with your Wizard levels, so we want as many of them as we can get. You will find yourself having so many cantrip slots here, so just again, take what you feel is right. And I'll be honest with you, your earliest spell aren't the most important. If you are going to use this build at the start of the game for a fresh playthrough, or you're swapping to it earlier on if you're interested in this, these are the four spells I would suggest having for now. Shield is just so unbelievably core to our existence. Quranic Orb is really solid damage that I think is going under the radar. Magic Missiles for the guaranteed damage, and Long Strider is just really good mobility in the early game. In any case, we don't need to spend too much time worrying about our early spell choices, Welcome to level 4, where we can get our subclass and essentially... This is where the fun begins. Abjuration is the choice because of this, Arcane Ward. It is so good in Baldur's Gate 3, and it is the biggest factor in what makes you nigh unkillable in this playstyle, and I will explain it in detail once we have finished doing up our levels. In any case, grab your extra pair of spells. Again, at this stage, just kinda take whatever, and you will be fine. Tailor it to your state and current situation. Level 5, Wizard Level 3 greets us as we just choose two more our spells. We're up to the uh, level twos now. We will be soon having to focus specifically on abjuration spells as they are the spell school that powers abjuration wizard, shockingly, but we don't get to the really good ones until level three. So again, just grab your misty step for the mobility. I love having knock just to get in chests and doors for general gameplay. That's really nice. So that's what I take here. But again, this one is really up to you, your personal preference. Friends. Then over at level 6, wizard level 4, we get yet more cantrips we probably will never cast and don't need, so just kind of grab one, and then uh, take your next set of spells. Again, just kind of do anything you feel like. Mirror image is uh, very nice to add to the whole you can't kill me vibe earlier on, but it's not something we'll really care too much about later. This is how I would set up at this stage, but the feat here is important. What we want to do before we get ability improvement is get Warcaster. We will have some potent concentration spells here, and because our whole thing is getting hit to reflect damage, we want to have advantage on keeping those concentration spells up as soon as possible. And actually, the Reaction Shocking Grasp is a fairly good amount of damage if we don't need our reaction for shield. So then we get to Wizard level 5, overall level 7, and this this is where we get some excitement, because now we can grab our two big abjuration spells. Counterspell to shut down enemy casters and give us stacks of damage reduction, and
and then Glyph of Warding. Also an abjuration and one of the best. It is massive AoE damage. It just quite literally blows groups of enemies up, especially when you first get it. It is a big power spike and because it is abjuration, it adds to our arcane ward. Haste is obviously amazing and is something we'll be picking up afterwards, but you want these on as soon as you can get them, and there we go. Next up, at uh, total level 8, wizard level 6, we get this little beauty, projected ward. Obviously, I am showcasing this solo so you can see how powerful it is, but you will likely have your party, and this is basically the no, you're not going to kill Karlak Button, or, you know, whoever your favourite companion is, if you've chosen the wrong one. And uh, then we get uh, our haste, so that's on our bars, and again, concentration, this is why we want Warcaster, so we can do double things a turn, or put it on someone else, and then you can choose projection from energy, just to get another level 3 abjuration spell, that is up to you. I also quite like fly, and yes, fireball is great, but the thing is, we want to be casting abjuration spells if possible, so we want to be using Glyph of Warding for our AoE damage. It's slightly less than Fireball, but it adds more to our overall playstyle. So we can, at this point, drop the mirror image, get on these two, and we are good to go. Then, up at level 9, wizard level 7, which is my current max level, we get ourselves level 4 spells. And this is where two really important, fantastic things happen. We get fire shield to stack extra reflective damage when we get hit on top of armor of agathes and it's not concentration so it doesn't have to be our concentrated spell it's brilliant is this thing it works so beautifully in what we're trying to do here secondly we get stone skin level four abjuration four stacks of arcane ward when we cast it it's concentration but we've got warcaster and then halving the incoming damage which is really important because if we reduce all damage we take by say 10 and then we take a 20 hit that gets half to 10 then reduced by 10 we've now taken zero damage so we've not eaten into our armor of agathes which as you'll come to see is really important so this thing is great and we want to get them both prepared as soon as possible. So this is how our setup will end up looking then. We have this kind of block of niche or utility or cantrips that we don't care about or likely will never cast, but they're sort of there because we just had to take a load of cantrips, so we don't need to worry too much about this. Though early on, Blade Ward is definitely nice before we get to the later juicier stuff, and having the kind of ranged Blast of Frost isn't the worst either for a cantrip, but what matters is this block on the left. We have have ourselves the amazing utility and buff that is haste for double action turns. We have flight to get around the place, and we have magic missile for some guaranteed damage if we ever need it at range. Hold person, again, just for some CC utility. These two can be kind of whatever you want them to be. Misty step is obviously amazing. Teleport to where you need to be, get out of danger, or more accurately here, into as much danger as possible, because that is not danger to you, and you'll just kill everyone you appeared next to, and then knock just to help me get in chests and doors, I just find it nice to have. Then, as we are a wizard, we can replenish our spell slots, which is also really nice, on top of getting the level 1 war cleric extra attack charges, so we can attack on three turns twice per long rest. That's, you know, definitely nice from just a level 1 dip alongside the heavy armor it gives us access to. But then we get to the main ones. Protection from evil and good is the most question mark here. It's your one cleric spell that you can choose. If you want some extra healing, you can put them on your bars. Or if you want to be the blesser earlier on, that's a really good choice too. But this just gives you a nice, easy level one abjuration spell to cast and get your stacks going. So let's actually go into the engine of uh, this setup then. It is a combination of Arcane Ward, Twixt, Armor of Agathes, 
augmented by the rest of what we have built around it in a big way. But at its base then, Abjuration Wizard gets Arcane Ward. Every time you cast an Abjuration spell, the spell level gets added to your stacks. We have three, we'll cast a level one spell, and now we'll go to four. But how does it actually interact with enemies hitting you? If I get hit for four damage, this will reduce the damage I take by four, because we have four stacks. Or if I got hit for ten, it'll mean I only take six damage. And then once it reduces the damage, you lose one stack. So four to three, next time it'll only reduce three. So it's kind of this ebb and flow in combat of your abjuration spells increasing your stacks while the enemy attacks decrease them at the bonus of you taking less damage. So that just works out. And once you get to high enough level, you every short rest will just get stacks equal to your wizard level, which is really nice to go into a fight with. So then enter Armor of Agathes and the reason why we took level 1 Sorcerer to get this. We want to upcast this at the highest level possible before every fight if possible. The reason being is we now get 25 temporary hit points, but more importantly, anything that attacks us gets 25 damage dealt to them. There's no roll, there's no save, there's no dice. If they land a hit, they take 25 cold damage, unless they're like immune or something, but you get my drift here. So we put this on ourselves and what do we have? We have 25 temporary hit points and because it is a abjuration spell itself, we have added five stacks to Arcane Ward. So if we get hit for nine damage, Arcane Ward will reduce that damage to zero, meaning we don't use any of our 25 temporary hit points, but because we got hit, Agathys will still reflect the cold damage. And that's the cincher. We get hit and hit and hit, but reduce the damage so much that we barely use our temporary health while reflecting the full 25 damage every single time. And it's glorious. We reduce our damage even more by wearing something like the adamantine armor, which reduces all incoming damage by two. You could even get the feat Heavy Armor Master for another three, but that's overkill. Your second feat should just be ability score improvement for two more int, so our offensive spells have got a little bit more kick to them. And then, now that you know that's all a thing, Fire Shield. Yes, it's evocation, but that is fine. We now add 2d8 damage to people that attack us. So they hit us at level 9, they take 25 cold damage, they then also take 2d8 damage. If you have what I have here in the Flesh Melter Cloak, they take 1 to 4 acid damage as well. Definitely recommend any extras like this you can find. And then because we just sat at 21 AC, we're just not going to get hit half the time. So bottom line, if an enemy attacks us, they will either, as I said at the start, not hit because we have 21 AC. We also have our reaction shield, which uh, means uh, that uh, we get to increase our AC by 5 and increase our arcane ward stacks by 1. So yeah, they really got to work hard to do damage. But if they do damage, arcane ward and uh, our adamantine armor and anything else you've got going on will reduce that damage really low and then armor of agathes will reflect 25 cold damage fire shield will reflect 2d8 damage and so on and so forth and there is the magic you either don't get hit or you kill the people that hit you while making them do no damage to you in the process. Stone skin halving the damage coming in and adding four stacks to your arcane ward is a brilliant use of your concentration if you don't need it for haste, which is the other brilliant use of your concentration. Then let's actually talk glyph of warding because this is lovely. It's an abjuration spell, so three stacks of arcane ward for casting it. We can choose the best damage type for the situation and it is a massive Massive area. We plonk it down, and of course, we could upcast it if we want. And apparently, I have really upset specifically just Gale, Scratch, and the Albear Cub. And now I feel kind of horrible. <laughs> but either way, it's not a low amount of damage, is it? 5 to 40. It's only a little bit less than Fireball and plays into our whole setup. 
I'll sort this situation out because I can't bring myself to even pretend to kill the owlbear cub, so one moment. Crisis averted then, and essentially you kind of know everything that's going on here and why it works so well. For your next levels in Wizard, obviously you'll get access to more spells, level 5 and level 6 spells. You just want to grab things like Conjure Elemental because it is ridiculously potent. And at level 6 spells, you can get a level 6 Abjuration spell, which is really, really nice to build some stacks very quickly in Globe of Invulnerability. You know, also makes you invulnerable for 3 turns, so that's good. Things like Sunbeam and Chain Lightning and Disintegrate just for pure damage. You kind of know the deal when it comes to those levels of abilities. But really, this is everything you need. Everything past this is just more cherries on top. Your standard practice, standard play then, is go into a fight before the fight happens, because this lasts all day, you don't have to time this, just cast it on yourself at the highest level possible, have your Agathys going, we've got our stacks of Arcane Ward. Turn one in the fight, you want to cast your shield on yourself, and there we are. After that, the turn after, you want to choose either Stone Skin if it's a particularly difficult fight, or Haste if you think you're going to walk over it quite quickly. Let's assume it's difficult. We've got Stone Skin, and we're up to our 14 stacks, and now we are basically ready to just stand there and solo by going AFK and just pressing end turn and letting everyone kill themselves attacking us while we just take no damage and pass this, do whatever you feel like each turn. Double attack with your weapon or blast down your glyph of warnings to AoE enemies or, you know, use your billion cantrips if you're really feeling a little bit fun. And then, yes, you can arcane recovery your fifth slot back so you can get a another round of a max upcast armor of Agathys. That's why this, this spell slot restoration here that I have from this beautiful amulet, which if you want to know where to get it, it is the Warden at the bottom of Moonrise Towers. She drops it. I would hardly recommend it for this setup. The weapon I'm using is the Blood of Lathander. We have a guide on how to get this legendary weapon. It's not the best or ideal, it's just quite solid for this setup because we do want to be using a shield and uh, that gives us the potent AC that we need along with evasive shoes giving me more AC. But essentially all that really matters is heavy armor that reduces incoming damage and then past that it's just bonuses. One hand and shield, more reflecting is good. Just use your common sense when it comes to what magic items you've actually found would help this sort of reflecty damage unkillable battle mage playstyle. So that's sort of it really. I don't think there's much more to say when it comes to this. It's fairly straightforward but it is just this beautiful symphony of cleric, sorcerer and wizard that lets you do what ever you want in combat because the enemies can't do anything to stop you or they'll die. Alright then guys, like you've enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more, consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below, and until we meet again, a good bye. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye